Hi there, so it's Jenna from the Edmonton Public Library's Makerspace. And since we're all stuck at home, we're gonna show you how to design your very own 3D model on Tinkercad. So that is tinkercad.com. And you're going to need to make an account and you can do that by clicking join now and create a personal account. And just sign up with your email. It's gonna ask you where you live, what your birthday is, and then to put in your email and a password. But the Makerspace already has an account, so we're going to go ahead and click sign in and enter our email and hopefully type it right the first time. Here's me muttering to myself under my breath. Don't say the password out loud. Okay. So if you've just created an account, it's very likely they're going to take you into a tutorial for Tinkercad, which you can X out of. Um, they're super good for getting you used to the Tinkercad designs. But for today's purposes, just follow along with what I'm doing. So we're going to go to Create New Design, this big blue button. And that's going to take us into the Tinkercad workspace. So you got yourself a big work plane with a grid. This grid is in millimeters. You can change that, but I personally really like millimeters. On the right hand side there's a whole bunch of shapes and you can just scroll through and check those out. And then in the top left you'll see this orientation box. This is super handy. You can click on it or drag it so that you know where you are in space. And that makes it very helpful for orientating yourself. Getting lost in the 3D space of Tinkercad is one of the hardest things to conquer. Uh, with your mouse, hopefully you are using a mouse with a scrolly key and a right and left click button. A trackpad is doable but very difficult. So with your scroll, you can zoom in and out of your workspace. If you click and hold the scroll, you can move the work plane around. And if you right click, you can drag it in the same way you drag the box at, at the top. This is going to be really important later when we make sure our objects are attached in all three dimensions. So today we're going to make a little dog house because why not? Actually it's because it's pretty easy to make and shows some of the basic applications of this software. So we're going to click on box and if you click you can then just plop it down in the middle. As you can see it then gives us some options. With our box selected, we have the white corner tabs, which you can adjust the size and shape of your box. We have the black side tabs that do the same thing, but only one side at a time, just like that. On the angle, you can see here we've got some rotation um, keys. If you click on that, you can rotate your cube. If you're on the inside here, it goes in 45 degree increments if you're on the or 30 whatever math that might be if you're on the outside you can go in by each individual degree depending on what you need there are three rotating tabs because we are again in three dimensions this top white square adjusts the height of your shape and then if you want to move your shape around you can click on it and move it in the x y axis and then use this black cone on top here to move it up and down in the Z axis. Another fun trick, if you want, you can adjust by clicking on your black tab here and then type in the dimension you want. So we're going to turn this back into a cube by making it 16 millimeters by 16 millimeters by... Six, oh nice, that one was already 16 millimeters. Okay, so we've got a box, but if we're going to make a doghouse, we should probably add a roof. There's a convenient roof triangle, and this object is the same. You can adjust it with all the little tabs, and we're just going to go ahead and type in 16 by 16 so that it's going to fit right on top. So then I'm going to move it up using the black cone, drag it over onto my object, now, <clears throat> I didn't drag it up high enough on purpose so that I could see that it's actually on top of my object and not floating somewhere behind it. 
and I'll just finish by dragging it up and then check it in all dimensions so you can tell that it's not um, accidentally having a gap or anything like that. If we were to see something like this, we would know it's not actually going to be printable because it's not attached. Okay, so then you're going to select both objects. You can do this by either clicking and holding shift or just drawing a little red box over top of them with your left click. And then up here in the corner you'll see the group button. You click on that and we have grouped our objects together. We know they're grouped because they are now just one color and they all change size and shape with one set of uh, white and black tabs. So now we've got a little house but we need somewhere for our dog to sleep in. So I'm gonna use this rounded roof shape. Seems like a good choice. And I'm going to make it a little bit smaller and see how that looks. Okay, so we have got our round shape inside of the house. You can see it with these dashed lines. Um, but this is still just a solid. It's not going to give us a little hole for our dog to live in. So with our object selected, you can go up here and you'll see the hole button. We know it's a hole because it's got the gray lines and looks transparent. And you can see it looks just like a shape. And it still functions the same with all of the tabs, but it is transparent. I'm going to group these together. And as you can see, it is now part of our object. Now let's say we didn't quite make this big enough for our dog. You can go ahead and click ungroup up here. A click away so that they're both not selected. And then we're going to just change the shape here. Keeping in mind all of our 3D printing basic principles. Uh, that's in a different video or Word document that you can read. So there we have our dog house. And if you wish to print this dog house, um, once our 3D printing services are back open with Milner's reopening, you would just need to give us your STL. So doing that on Tinkercad, you click on your object, go up here to export, and click STL. Uh, one other thing I forgot to mention was the beautiful naming system that Tinkercad has. Here we have the glorious Wilhelmlo. You can click that and just change it to a uh, title that suits what you want. So there you go, we've made a doghouse, and hopefully you can use some of these basic skills to start making your own creations while you're stuck inside, and we look forward to seeing all of your cool submissions once our 3D printing service reopens with Milner.